I was born in Somalia and raised in Somalia and left. Which part of Somalia? Uh, part of Kenya border, where I grew up in my age of like, you know, teenager age, and I left when I was pretty young. I was literally 19 years old. I had to choose between two formal education, which was a basic high school, primary, whatever you call it, degree, or I had to find a shorter way. You didn't attend like not really classroom. Not, you don't have classmates. Never, never in my life. I have no. I have a lot of friends in business in life, but not classmates. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. It's your favorite village boy, Mr. Ghana Baby, and uh, I'm still here in Somaliland. And this guy, I mean, this is the third time we're meeting, right? Yeah, man. In three different cities. Yeah, man. Where did I meet you? We met in Juba. First time in Juba. Yeah. Almost in Jigjiga. <laughs> Almost in Jigjiga. Mogadishu. Mogadishu. And then Hargeisena. And then Hargeisena. Yeah. You know how I got to know you? Yeah. I was watching a video from my friend Dubinsky. Um, he did a story on you and I asked Dubinsky, you know what? I need to meet this guy myself because I really want to know the real story myself. I grew up poor and now I'm running a successful business in South Sudan. So I am here just to get to know your story and I hope and believe that your story can inspire many young Africans out there. Bijal, were you born and raised in Somalia? Uh, I was born in Somalia and raised in Somalia and left. Which part of Somalia? Uh, part of Kenya border, where I grew up in my age of like, you know, teenager age and I left when I was pretty young. And uh, I, of course, the opportunity was very limited back uh, home. How, how old were you when you left? I was literally 19 years old. 19 years? Yeah. And why did you live in the first place? Of course, opportunities were pretty, pretty much limited and uh, I had to leave the comfort zone. I didn't see any future coming home. Then the best way was to leave and find a better solution. And that's how I left. And of course, when I reached there, I start, you know, hustling on my own. Where were you? Like when you left where you were, where did you go? I, I went to Kenya. That was the closest border. And I have to find civilization my own, on my own and, you know, technologies and stuff. In it was back in the days of the internet when I left, literally well, 2007, 2008, when the internet started, and that's literally my, you know, my school, where I learned everything. You went to school in? Like Not really. I didn't. I didn't have a formal education, and I didn't. You have them? When I went there, I had to choose between two: formal education, which was a basic high school, primary, whatever you call it, degree, or I had to find a shorter way. Since I didn't have a, you know, support and of course the financial capacity, I didn't have the financial freedom and back home I had to support the family. I, and the internet was out there. I had to find a way of shortcut of learning stuff from the internet and you know, starting from fresh. So technically I didn't have any formal education. Everything I know I learned from the internet. All the language I speak today, the computer knowledge I have today, everything from the scratch on the internet. You didn't attend like Not really. classroom, Not, you don't have classmates? Never, never in my life. I have no. I have a lot of friends in business in life, but not classmates. And that's one thing I'm proud of. Like everyone else can say I have a degree or a master's, but no, I, I won't say. How that. many languages do you speak now? Four. In, when I add Somali, which is of course my mother's language, four languages. You learned English online. English online from the streets, movies, documentary, whatever you call it. So I hail from the streets, Arabic from the streets, and of course Somali, which is my mother's language, man. And. What happened to you in Kenya? You, you, you established yourself in Kenya or you left to another place? Uh, Kenya was technically the, the starting ground for me. Where, you know, it's a pretty welcoming country. Community are very nice, welcoming people. Where opportunities are open, but if you capitalize the any opportunity, you see it. So that's where I start learning everything, building my network and meeting good people in my, where I was working in the, in the internet cafe. And then eventually I had to go to South Sudan, which was virgin as well the newest country in the world, which everything literally was fresh back in the days of 2012. Wait, what work were you doing in Kenya? I was working in a Sebi cafe for five years. As? As computer assistants, the manager eventually, and then mm -hmm. I, 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 I created... <laughs> I guess now I understand why you said you learned everything on the internet. Because yeah, you're I, in I the had, of it. exactly. I had, my, at least I, I had a good access of information, so I capitalized the information and the opportunity I had, and that's how it helped me. And then people who took me to Juba, actually I met them through the Sebi Cafe. They were my client and eventually become my partners in business. So they took me to Juba to see if we can do bigger things. 
related to my, you know, my background of IT. Then when I went there, I started my company, and the IT was not even there. The, since the internet was, internet was the most expensive thing I've seen in Juba. Literally, we were paying five hundred dollar for literally capacity speed of two G or something. So it wasn't possible for me to open a Sebi Cafe or pursue my, my dream of the IT business. Then I had to change the whole thing, the narrative, and start an entrepreneurship business and start my company, which is Season Global today. Then uh, I started trading. Then three years later, three years later, the war happened. Everything went upside down in Juba. Then I had to change the normal trade to humanitarian business since the currency of the country died because of inflation and stuff. Then that's when I started humanitarian business and you know start working with an international organization. Then eventually, we build a system, employ people. Then yeah, you work for an international organization. Yeah, we we work with them. We, we, we play a role of logistics and supply chain management as a support unit like on the ground. So we supply them the emergency stuff and everything wow. else. Yeah. Bro, I feel like you more inspiration than I think, you know. And I just want to know, like, how many people have you employed so far? At the moment, we have 35 people on the ground, but we have also over 50 people who work now at the warehouse, which are like day-to-day -day basis. And, uh, but that, that five people are the permanent employees and all over the East African offices we have. I mean, are you trying to start anything in Kenya? We do have an office in Kenya, one in Uganda, and uh, one in Somalia, Mogadishu. Also, we have an agent here in, 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 in uh, Somaliland. Somaliland. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Like, apart from this humanitarian logistics that you're providing, um, do you have any other thing that you're starting in Nairobi, Kenya or something? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do real estate business in Nairobi. Oh, yeah, into real estate too? Yeah, I'm really into real estate too, yeah. Bro. The hustle, man, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we have to keep the hustle. Though. You have to keep the hustle. But uh, I check your Instagram, I that you're a guy that really travels. Uh, have you ever been to... Uh, yeah, I do travel a lot. Uh, Technically, one of the major things helped me to be where I am today also is travels and seeing the world and you know, learning a lot from overseas and bringing back the ideas back home. Uh, I've been to 43 countries and I have a little side hustle dream of visiting every country in the world. Thanks to Corona, but I, I could be in 100 countries now. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I'm stuck today because of my COVID tests and everything else. But uh, yeah, the, the travel world become challenged, but uh, I really learn a lot from traveling. and. Uh, I'm 40 plus countries now and I really want to try. It doesn't matter how long it takes me, but I'll, I'll, I'll try to visit every country in the world. I would say that you are one of the people that we proud to call Made in Africa product. You're actually a Made in Africa product. Do you know that? Thank you so much, man. I appreciate but it, man. Do you say that there are opportunities in Africa? Opportunities are a lot, but the challenge we have in our people, I'm going to tell you one. You know, uh, when I start hustling back in the days, 10 years ago, well, I'm, you, I'm not the most successful guy you met today, or literally you met in your life, but literally the challenge we have when it comes to successful, people think, so you are successful, but they want to get you successful or whatever route you went through in overnight. It doesn't take overnight. It took me 10 years of hustling and struggling to reach where I am today. So when they put time and energy and action, everybody will reach there. You have a lifetime. You have your own lifetime, the whole, like, your entire life to reach or destination or becoming successful. You don't have a days or two just to boom. And the other challenge we have here, like people when they get opportunity, they don't capitalize because of most of people, they don't differentize and don't know how to make decision between their pride and their problem. Sometimes you gotta have to choose between your pride and your problem. When you get, put your pride aside, any job you get, it doesn't matter what background is or how it look like and how people will talk about the job. Mm. Just capitalize, get it. The opportunity won't come back every day to you. Whoa. And that's how I capitalized any opportunity I've seen it. And of course, I didn't even waste any. I don't even remember any opportunities that I wasted. Do you believe that Africa is the future? Africa is the future. Well, literally, Europe is only getting colder. The weather is bad and everything, like, literally, technology is there. So Africa wouldn't... Everything is virgin. So people will come back to Africa 10 years from now. And of course, countries like Kenya and other, like, South Africa. In fact, Kenya is going to... I've seen... I was reading a report... Uh, where they say Kenya is going to be the, the fastest growing economy in Africa for 2030. Mm. So, for example, people are coming back after 10 years and the world is changing through digital currency and everything and, and legally everything will be the same. So when they come back, they won't find opportunity. They won't be fit in, in the community of Africa 10 years from now. So if you want to catch up, you have to catch up yesterday, not even today. Wow. That's what I believe, man. So he's trying to say Africa is the past, the present, 
in the future. Exactly. Africa is the next big thing, whether they like it or not. If you had the chance to change one thing in Africa, what would that be? Well, if you had a chance to change, is the system. The system is pretty much not supporting the youth. You know, uh, if the system could be supporting the youth, we have, we have bright, challenge, young, talented people here in Africa. But the challenge, we don't have the system to support them. But of course, the only person who can change yourself and the content and your country is you. The moment you believe into yourself and you think you can do it, you can do it. You don't have to blame the system, which has been, you know, it's been there, there for. So every one of us has a contribution to change the system. And you have to start with yourself and believe into yourself. What is the major challenge that you faced in the continent of Africa as a youth? Well, a lot of people won't believe in you and they'll say, you, you can't do it, you're crazy. And unless you sound crazy to them, you will never be, you know, you'll never do, achieve crazy results. So believe into yourself, don't listen to people. People will always give you reason why you cannot do it. They won't give you reason why you should do it. So believe into yourself, of course, the idea you come with yourself and is your idea, and you're the only one who can do the best in it. So believe into yourself, don't listen to people. People with 99% will give you a negative response of any idea you ask them. People give you... Of, of course, whatever I was doing, they were like, well, you're crazy, man. What are you doing in South Sudan? What are you doing this? What are you doing that? And I thought, okay, well, let's see 10 years from now how it goes. And we'll have a different conversation. So what matters is believe into yourself, put a time, energy, and believe God. Your final message to young Africans watching us right now? Well, this contents, there's a lot of Muzungus. I don't want to be racist as well, but a lot of Muzungus coming back to Africa, taking our opportunities, our business, our jobs in the UN, the humanitarian, everything. You guys need to come back. Fight for your positions and your continent and your countries. Come back, get a job, feed the societies, and come back from the Western countries. I've been to over literally 30 Western countries. The only thing you see is racism they're facing every day. The opportunities are pretty hard. Whatever they make is hand to mouth. It's, the system is generated not only to make you successful, it's actually to feed you. Come back to Africa and let's make the continent great again. Come back to Africa and let's make the continent great again. But I would say that come back to Africa and let's all come together and make Africa home again. Thank you so much for talking to me. And make sure you check out Bishar on Instagram, follow him on Instagram. And is there anything you want to add that I never asked? I just want to add one more thing. What is it? A lot of people don't really try to invest in money and some stuff, other material that mm. really doesn't last longer. Mm. I could give you one advice to the youth. Always, when you want to get involved in business, try to invest in your network. I always say your network is your net worth. Try to connect a lot of people. Of course, you know, <laughs> our connection help you, <laughs> whatever you've been traveling. Yeah. Always I invest the network, not the See, money, the, not the material. So I your network been, is your network. I have been telling a lot of people, network worth more than money. Exactly. Based on my experience. Yeah. So hey, build a network and that network will help you build your net worth. Thank you so much for watching and I'm gonna see you next time. You're the man. My brother, good to see you again.